Welcome to the Sherburn Business Spotlight. I'm Dave Sorter from the Sherburn Inn, and um, this program is brought to you by the Sherburn Business Association along with Dover Sherburn Cable TV. This is a program that is meant to promote business in Sherburn and pr promote the familiarity of the various business partners in Sherburn with each other as well as with the Dover Sherburn community. Um, among, this among the many talented people we have in Sherburn is a nationally known artist by the name of Ann Robb. And Ann has a wonderful history and she's a wonderful person and I just want to welcome her to this moment of business opportunity. Welcome Ann. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you were born and raised in Connecticut, and uh, I'm sure that your talent was developed at an early age. Can you tell us about your love of art and when it started? I think I, I really fell in love with art through a box of Crayolas. And I was a little tiny girl, and uh, it was everything to me. I just, I can still smell the wax. And I went from there to work with pencils and then with brushes, but I was very small. And uh, you went to the master's school in Dobbs Ferry before Smith? I did. And these must have trained you in the, the fine arts? Yes, um, I had to keep my grades up so that I could take my art courses, but I, it kept me working hard. But you first realized your creativity and your talent when you were really just a small little kid. That's right. Um, in 1956, you studied in Florence, Italy. You did some studying abroad, too. Uh, tell us about the broadening of your artistic talent. I think being in Florence was um, very formative for me because uh, I began to study the layers of fine paint, very thin layers in the Renaissance paintings uh, that fascinated me in the colors. And so my work has really taken on a layered look, I think. Did you go to the MFA art school too? I went to night school in life drawing. And life drawing is interesting because it, it forces you to work quickly and, so, and very surely. You, you can't go over your mistakes. You just keep going. Now, once you graduated from Smith and once you had done all this studying and so on, you went to work for Dr. Land at Polaroid, is that right? I did. Uh huh. And uh, did you initially think you were going to be a photographer? Well, I started as a lab technician, and um, I, this is m one of my cameras. This I Could did. Could you show that to? Uh, this is um, an old uh, 110A. Uh, it's got a little mold on it, but I think it's sort of part of it. It still bears the uh, name of the SX-70 lab that I worked in. And um, I worked from uh, black and white work into color work and uh, where I was illustrating Dr. Land's lectures. And uh, he sent me to the Fogg Museum and to the Gardner where I had space set up for me uh, that I could uh, photograph original work um, in transparency form that he hoped to use in schools as a teaching device. And uh, so I, in the fog, I was locked in a little room behind Greek urns with Degas. And at the Gardner, I uh, set up in front of the Rape of Europa. And uh, both were just wonderful experiences for me. I, I'm not sure that many of the younger people know what a land camera is, but these were the first instant, instantly produced uh, photographs. Uh, it had its own film, and when you press the trigger, uh, the image was cast onto a film, and then out popped the developed film. And so this was the first. This instant. still has film. It still has a. <laughs> it still has something in there. Okay, but this was the first instant camera, and of course now everybody knows that now you can do digital photography quicker and faster and better than uh, Dr. Land supposed. But I think this is really where the first idea of instant photography began. Um, 
You started Kedron Design in 1957. 1977. 1977, I'm sorry. And I started painting um, uh, little house portraits like this one. And um, I would go all over New England painting these uh, pr private homes. And, and then um, it was my husband that encouraged me to get into publishing uh, the work. Uh, I, I decided that after much urging that that sounded like fun. And so I selected a group of historic buildings in Boston and I painted those and published 10. Uh, at that point, I had no accounts, but I knew I needed to have um, a physical product, a visual, to sell my idea. So I, I found a publisher in Annapolis, Maryland, and I published uh, 50,000 note cards. And, um, With no audience. I had no, I had no accounts, and I, I ended up, um, I started with Sharif Crump and Lowe, mm -hmm. uh, packaging in little velvet uh, tuxedo bowed packages of historic Boston, and from there it moved to Williamsburg. Well, let me tell you that I first saw your work in Williamsburg. I had no clue who you were, but this was in the 70s, and Rosie and I were staying at the Williamsburg Inn, and I picked up this somewhat whimsical, naive folk art kind of uh, note card, and I said, boy, this catches my eye. And Rosemary said, well, Ann Robb lives in Sherburn. I said, well, if Ann Robb lives in Sherburn, must not be a bad place to live because <laughs> we live there too. Um, but uh, what, what did you do in Williamsburg? A lot of things have come out of Williamsburg, but did you do some artwork down there? I did, I've done probably, um, over the years, I've probably done about 35 paintings of Williamsburg, of its uh, historic buildings. Uh, one of the first was uh, this little one of the Orrell House, and um, that was, a a small painting for me, uh, for them, but uh, Dr. Land at that time said, you should make these bigger. And he took that little original and put it in a 24 by 24 camera and came up with this idea, which I submitted to them, and it became the first poster. And we've done um, three other posters for Williamsburg. And that led me then to do a series of projects for Monticello. And the, the, this is a view of the vegetable garden. Uh, I was able to go, this is almost the first part of daylight in the morning. It was probably seven o'clock in the morning, so it has a wonderful misty look. And this little picture has, was enlarged by laser just the way the other one was. And um, it's also appeared, it's become sort of an icon for Monticello. And here it is um, published in a little garden journal that I did a number of years ago. This was one of my most enjoyable products. I just had a wonderful time with it. And they allowed me to use uh, Thomas Jefferson's quotes. So it's a, a book, um, it's an undated book, but it's a book of, um, it says, a portrait collection of Monticello Gardens by Ann Bell Robb with quotations from Thomas Jefferson on the subject of gardening. And I think that was a wonderful way for me to begin my books. This is a new one. Um, that I haven't written, but this is Peter Hatch, who is the conservator and head gardener at Monticello. It's just been published, but it's the same little painting used again. Well, you're a northerner, you're a New Englander. What, are you, what were you doing down south? What were you doing down in uh, Virginia well, and Williamsburg? I, I, I think that was a leap of faith. They, they seemed to like this rather primitive, uh, folky look, and of course folk art is very much part of Williamsburg's collection. So it, it seemed to fit. 
Did the colors at Williamsburg have anything to do with the colors that you use, the pastels? Well, they're beautiful, of course, and I tried to uh, stay close to those. Uh, the colors as I was beginning my work are very, very pale, mm -hmm. and they've become more uh, vibrant as time goes on. Now, what medium do you use? What, what is your... I use, um, I use an acrylic, and I use it like a watercolor. I, I've painted in watercolor, so I'm familiar with that. Um, but I use, uh, I have two brushes. Uh, this one is for my background work, and this, which is a uh, triple O, it's very fine, uh, and I can only use, I can get about three paintings from this, and then I have to start over. Um, and this does not only the detail work, but a lot of the uh, background finish work. This is all by triple O brush. And um, so I find that I'm very much at home with these two brushes. Um, and I've, the only time I veered from that was when a friend here in Sherburne, George Lewis, said, Anne, you must paint larger. And that little painting was done with slightly larger brushes. And in fact, I used a house painting brush for the background and then um, a, a smaller brush, maybe the, the triple O for the buildings. Um, but in the end, when it's published, it's small. It looks just like the little paintings. Is that his farm? No, that's in Vermont. That's in Vermont. Actually, I see. But um, can I show you this one? Of course. This is. Uh, By the way, Anne is an author. Also, <laughs> I do want to bring that up because she has uh, published many books, and many of them are very pictorial. And um, my books are really picture books. Picture books. And uh, the the words are supplied by you. Right. And this is a journal, a blank journal, and this. Um, is the Willis Farm on Farm Road. And if you don't recognize it, um, it's because it's painted both sides, the front and the back, in one painting. And uh, that's also in a note card, which um, I've done a number of Sherburn note cards. Uh, this is of the Silverwood Organic Farm. and. Uh, uh, there are... Well, we have some of the Sherburn in as well. Yes. I know that, and we, yes. we uh, have used, we have sold them and used them for many, many years, so I know about your Sherburn note cards for sure. Um, your overall aspect of painting, though, has been really produced by Kedron Design, which has products. You, you really haven't had a gallery showing of your art. You really have relied on the products that you produce to uh, show people your artwork. Is that well? Uh, initially, right? I I I did have a gallery showings. One was at the Boston Athenaeum, and another at the Atlantic Monthly, which had a charming gallery on uh, Arlington Street. And then Bloomingdale's invited me to come in and hang a show on, on its walls, which was a, an assemblage, a group of assemblage. Well, now, now, when you did that, would you bring wall hangings and seat cushions? These were or would assemblage. You bring paintings? These were large pieces of assemblage work. I see. Um, the hooked product came later. These uh, rugs that are hanging um, are part of a collaboration uh, which has been a joyful uh, project for me with uh, a mill in Shanghai. And my work is sent over in um, digital form. Uh, pictures are transmitted to China. And I've coded all of the colors according to the original. I have a, a book of yarns that I work with. And we seem to understand each other. We don't speak each other's language except visually. And it's been a wonderful uh, project. This is a Sherburn um, farm. Is that this George is the, Fisk's? This is George's Yeah, I thought it was farm. his garden. A beautiful garden. Barn, yeah. 
and then a lot of um, little Sherburn dogs. Yep. And uh, that one of the vineyard next to it is also um, has a lot of local dogs. You've done a lot of work in Nantucket in the vineyard. I have. And the Cape. I do have. you have a home down there? I do. You do. And that's where our name comes from, the vineyard. It's the name of our family home, Kedron. I see. So. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, I have one of your seat cushions, and I always know whether I'm going north, south, east, or west, so <laughs> thanks to your seat cushion, I appreciate yeah, that. Um, every one of your products has a story, and um, when people come to your store, which is in your home, they don't come they to don't my store. They don't come to your store. They go through the internet. They do. They do. The internet you, is my store. And you have a catalog that you've made? I have a, a catalog which people can um, have if, if by mail, and this is a, a really a fairly comprehensive look at product. And but we keep up to date on the internet through our website, which is uh, KedronGifts.com. All small case. Yes. K e d r o n gifts. G i f t s. dot com. Yes. Okay. And um, the, I think I'd just like to mention that um, my work seems to be coming full circle with uh, the camera has always been my friend, but now it's becoming my medium. And um, I've done, a, a, this is a self-published book uh, called Dreamscapes, and most of it is uh, filmed in Sherburne, and, um, except for the water. <laughs> But um, these are, and here is sculpture, and having worked with a photographer of sculpture, I, I saw this come out again years later. Here it is, 40, 50 years later, I'm doing something of what I was studying at Smith. And here, these are um, the Charles River, the vineyard, the Willis Farm, now, do you do all self-publishing, or do you have a publisher? Uh, I do self-publishing, mm -hmm. and um, I find that it's very exciting. It's not uh, something that one makes a, a lot of money from, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's very satisfying. And you have so many products. I, I wish you would show some of your products to uh, the audience. I think people would be very interested to see what you do. Here, here, this is a, a little dog. My interest in dogs is, is unfailing. And uh, here was the Sherburn Inn, a note card. This was um, a photograph that came out of the uh, project for Elm Bank. This was a, uh, a marble piece from one of the fireplaces. Uh, this is the organic farm. Um, these are some painted shells which came about uh, by serendipity. I, I went to Newport and I would look for something that I could take home as, or mail as a souvenir. I found nothing. So walking First Beach, I came upon these beautiful clam shells and um, I turned them into souvenirs and then published them. I, I couldn't sell them this way. Although it's beautiful to paint on, it's very smooth and silky. Um, so I did a series of the clamshells, uh, with, and this is uh, my take on a Sailor's Valentine, which is a shell. Now it's that's a, imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a sense of humor in a lot of the work. I have noticed that <laughs> from the beginning. I, I especially like your mermaids, which you did not bring along today, but uh, there's a little frill frivolosity in your work, as Perhaps. well as whimsical, as well as folk art. Um, other products that you have include a cookbook, I know, and yeah. you Here's have a new, this is a new photograph, and uh, this is kind of fun. Um, this is called uh, Thinking Outside the Box, and uh, I don't know if you could guess what the subject is. Orchid. Well, yes, but this, the place of it is... Oh, the moon? <laughs> no, it is actually in Natick. It's the 
it was the dump. No. And now it's the golf course. <laughs> so uh, it, it's really an example of, of thinking outside the yes, box. Yes, it is. And I don't know what this framework was mm -hmm. for, but it was too tempting not to photograph. I think it is a tent in full season mm -hmm. uh, as a staging place. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, the, uh, you have belts and you have scarves and you have all kinds of other stuff. I I've know. done a lot of work for Harvard and I work um, for the various classes at Harvard reunions. So they have asked me to come up with gift ideas and so I've, I've done a number of, of scarves and I've done belts. This is a logo. This is where my graphics come in. Mm -hmm. uh, a logo which was used on bags and coasters and hats and uh, clocks and um, so that's been a lot of How fun. How many products do you have? I don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> well I looked up uh, on your home page uh, you have some of your products from the catalog and um, they're so interesting everyone is so individualistic and uh, and good, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. Do you have anything else that we should see before we leave, like the plates? Well, I know these are um, some plates that I had made in Shanghai uh, years ago. Uh, I was uh, always looking for a way to use my um, prints, my paintings, or, and in this case, drawings, and I thought that they might translate to porcelain and I had seen Chinese uh, export China that looks something like this, and so these were designed from the homes of sea captains in Salem, and the Peabody Essex was very helpful to me in researching um, the China in their collection and then uh, encouraged me with this project. And we sold it at their gift shop until it, it's sold out. There are no more there were only a hundred sets of four. Um, it wasn't totally a successful project, uh, but it, and in fact I said I'll never work with China again <laughs> <laughs> because um, as you can see it's a little uneven and uh, a lot of it is stamped that should have been no, painted. The country or the material? China. <laughs> um, I don't know, but these were these were fired in a 400-year-old kiln, uh, which to me was just fascinating, and I love being part of that. And all its irregularities like that come from that process. Um, then I came, um, you know, 30 years later to do rugs in China, and uh, that's been a very good experience. Could you show them your cookbook? I know that you have a cookbook somewhere. Oh, yeah. And I'm just wondering, because it's a very interesting cookbook, and I don't know if... I tried photographing food, and uh, photographing food is a real art, mm -hmm. and I didn't have it. Mine all looked like goulash. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I will photograph the family china. And so each page is illustrated uh, with, with a, a photograph. A, with a photograph. Ah. And uh, I did a few still lives. So you are coming around to photography. I am. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. my, I think my book, this book, uh, is taking me there. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on another one. Mm -hmm. And so it, and of course the catalog is um, a collection of my prints. And I think probably that's where we should draw the line because I think people that want to go into all of Anne's work really should spend more time than we have on this program, but if you go to her um, website and write to her, um, get her catalog, uh, you'll see all the wonderful artwork that she's done and how she's used it in so many different products so that the life of your product comes to life because of the artwork that's in it. So, Ann, I really would like to go on and on and on and on because you have so many wonderful things to talk about. But I do want to thank you for thank being you. here. And I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to show the people of Sherburn the wonderful artwork that you possess. And I've always been impressed by it. And I've been impressed by these last few days of talking to you. Thank you, Dave. So thank you very much, Ann. And 
we'll be signing off for now. And uh, until next time, until we have another one of our wonderful Sherburn or Dover people uh, to display their talents, um, I will say goodbye for now. And I'm Dave Sorter signing off for the Sherburn Business Association. Thank you.